Welcome back to Hits. Yes, this is another tutorial. We're going to be talking about the Premiere Pro Creative Cloud 2020 Effects Panel. And this is VidHits. So if you've been around this channel a little bit, you understand that this channel is all about us taking our skill to the next level. I'm Aaron Jones, I'm your big brother, and I got your back. And this tutorial is about the Premiere Pro Creative Cloud 2020, the effects panel. The first thing we need to really talk about before getting into the effects panel is the sequence itself. Now, the sequence is basically a timeline. What you're doing is you're holding uh, information on a video clip in your sequence and you can have multiple sequences obviously so what I normally do is I will have a certain sequence that I will actually do a lot of the edit and then I'll bring it into another sequence so forth and so on so basically what I want to explain is how to set up your sequence now on my previous video which was showing you how to get started in Premiere Pro I didn't really cover it a whole lot and if you want to look at that video you can see it right here so now let's talk about the sequences. So we're gonna start here in the sequence. I got the sequence ready to go. If you don't know how to bring up your new sequence, it's control in for PC users and command in for Mac users. So now here we are inside of our new sequence. Basically we're looking to bring a new sequence online. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to name the sequence. Let's name it, I'm just gonna name it new sequence. right and I'm gonna pick um, just some off the wall something that I know I don't have the resolution because what I want to show you is when you bring your clip into your sequence it'll ask you if you want to match the settings of your clip okay let's try this one so I'm gonna go to my project panel here and I'm going to bring down a sequence. I'm just going to click, drag right onto the sequence. So here we go right here. It's asking this clip does not match the sequence's settings. Change sequence to match the clip settings. It's asking if you want to keep the current setting in which you brought in the sequence or if you want to match the sequence settings to the clip that you brought into the sequence, right? So we're going to say change to match the settings of the clip. So what that did was it changed, it changed the settings of that sequence to match the clip so the clip is perfectly placed in that sequence. So now let's, let's do it another way. I got a PC, so I'm going to do control in. I'm going to put second sequence. And if you are in, if you are bringing in a HD file, which is 1920 by 1080, then you want to come down here to HDV and based on your frame rates, um, I normally shoot in 24 frames per second. And right here, you will see that this is a 16 by nine ratio and it is 1080p HD video at 23.976, basically 24 frames per second. So that's what I want to do. I want to bring in a HD 1080p 24 frames per second sequence. So I hit OK. Now I'm going to bring in a clip that I know is a 4K clip and watch what happens. I'm going to say keep this. I'm going to say keep the existing settings. And so as you can see, that my 4K file is very large inside of the 1080 sequence, right? So we go back to our new sequence, right? This is where we scaled 
that particular sequence to the 4K file, remember? So we go to our second one. And so we have a 1080 timeline here, or sequence, and we put a 4K file in it. So I just wanted to show you the differences and why that would be necessary. Because normally for me, I shoot in 4K mainly because I love the frame control, which means that you can see the 4K file is a lot larger than 1080p. I normally deliver my projects in 1080p. So if I have a 4K file, then that means my, my little 1080p and my bigger 4K file, I can move that to get 1080p around that file. And which this is where we're gonna talk more about the effects panel. So with my sequence that I want to uh, start editing with, I make sure that's highlighted and I go down and make sure the file is highlighted that I wanna edit with. So then I go over here to effects controls. So now we're gonna start with motion. Again, I can't stress enough, you have to make sure that that clip is highlighted or it doesn't know what you want to um, change the effects of. Or it doesn't know what you want to edit. So if I just picked off of that file, see there's nothing inside the effects controls because it doesn't know what you want to edit. So once I click on the clip that I want to edit, now I have my properties or I have my ability to start um, editing that particular clip. So we're going to start with position. So again, I told you this is a 1080, 1080p um, sequence and I have a 4K file on this particular timeline. So what that is, I'm going to go right here to position. Let's talk about position a little bit. Now I can move my position inside this 4K file. And basically, what this is, is the 4K file is actually uh, twice as big as the 1080p, if that makes sense to you. So I can move up and down, right? And so let us, let us do a little keyframing here. And this is what I wanna show you about the motion. So let's start, let's just say we want to pan, let's scale out a bit, get to look a little, look a little real here, okay? And let's say we wanted to pan a little bit, do a little pan while he was talking. So let's use our keyframes to do that. This is the position I want to start with at the beginning of the clip. And I go right here and I'll hit my keyframe, meaning this is where I want to start because this is where my, my reader is. I want to start right there. And then I find out where I want to end up at. Well, let's say about right here. I don't want to make this too long. So let's say about right here. I want to end up over here. Okay. So now, when I play this, See, basically I told it where the start point was and I told it where I wanted to end. So that's what the keyframe is really all about. You're just telling it where you want it to be at whatever point inside of the position of the clip. So now let's add a little bit of scaling. Let's say this was the full uh, 4K clip. So that would be 100%. Unless we want a keyframe here. And at the end of our pan, we want it to zoom out. Let's say we want it to zoom out to about, 
now 60%. And then we want up and we want this over. Okay. All right. So then we play it. So, I'm sitting here checking out these comics. <laughs> There's some weird stuff, man, I'll tell you what. Weird. But, you know, time comes that comics are old. Time for something new. You ever play COD online on your cell phones? I'll tell you what, good stuff, great graphics, good gameplay. There are some people that are really good at them. So you see that? What we did was we just basically zoomed out. And with the mix of the pan, you didn't really notice that we were panning because of the zoom out. Basically, it was holding a certain position. And so I just want to show you some of the power of being able to move your motion controls around and using keyframes. So there's a lot of creative things that you can do with this, but I just want to get you guys started and show you how it's possible. And you can also go back to each keyframe, make it quick, if you want to go to the last keyframe that we set right here, how would you do it? Well, basically, that's what these arrows are right here. And so you hit that, and boom, you're right on the keyframe. You don't have to try to position it or whatever. It just makes it easy to access. You want to go to the next one, you hit the arrow again. You want to go back, you hit the arrow again. And so it'll keep taking you to the next keyframe. So that makes it easier if you kind of want to make some adjustments or you make some changes. So I tell you what. There's another thing that I normally use is the rotation. Let's use the rotation in conjunction of what we have already done. So we're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to go down here to rotation right here. And I've hit the keyframe to start a keyframe. We want to start here. Well, maybe I'll start at 180 degrees. And we'll start him upside down. Okay. Let's put 180. All right. And let's zoom him out right here a little bit. Just enough so we can kind of see him. We'll make this adjustment here. All right. And then when we get to the end of our pan and the end of our scaling here, we want it to be right side up, back at zero. All right, so let's give this a shot and see how that looks. So basically what we did was we used keyframe to set this up. Good to go. So, I'm sitting here checking out these comics. <laughs> There's some weird stuff, man, I'll tell you what. Weird, but you know, Time comes that comics are old. Time for something new. You ever play COD online on your cell phones? I'll tell you what, good stuff, great graphics, good gameplay. There are some people that are really good at them. See what I mean? So that is an instance where you can actually use keyframes and get the functioning where you want it in your clip. So let's play with it a little bit. So right here where it takes so long to actually do the flip, um, the 180 degree flip, I'm gonna pull the start closer. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna see that flip happen a lot faster because I'm pulling it closer. I'm pulling the start point closer to the end point. So let's see what that looks like. Good to go. So, I'm sitting here checking out these comics. <laughs> There's some weird stuff, man, I'll tell you what. Weird. But, you know, time comes that comics are old. Time for something new. You ever play COD online on your cell phones? I'll tell you what, good stuff, great graphics, good gameplay. There are some people that are really good at them. And there you have it. There are some keyframes that we put in place so that you can make the functionality of your clip the way you want it. So you can be very creative and do a bunch of different things that you want to do and have your own style. 
let's also talk about moving the keyframes. So let's say I wanted to move the endpoint of all the keyframes and make it longer. Basically, I would use my lasso tool. Basically, I'll just click and drag and lasso the points that I want to select. And then I can just move them all at the same time. So let's say I want to just bring this here. Let's say I want to lasso this here. I'm going to go to my first point here. Instead of 180, I'm going to do 360. adjustments to my starting point here and here we go So there we have it. We use keyframes to change our position, our scale, and our rotation. I hope this helps you. I don't want to make the video too long. I want to make sure that you guys are able to grasp what it is that I'm trying to explain. And if you like this video, go ahead and comment down below. If there's something you want to see that I did not cover here, go ahead and let me know. On this channel, Iron Sharpens Iron is all about us taking our skill to the next level. I'm Aaron Jones. I'm your big brother. I got your back. If you have not already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. I got more videos coming at you. Just make sure you go out and you film something and kill it.